Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Bob Hope and Lucille Ball in Fancy Pants. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. One of man's greatest gifts is that of laughter, particularly the talent for making other people laugh. Tonight, as our stars, we are fortunate enough to have two clowns. First, the unpredictable Mr. Robert Hope, and second, uh, and by far the prettier of the two, uh, <laughs> Miss Lucille Ball. We will present this extraordinary team in their Paramount Picture Riot, Fancy Pants. Now, Fancy Pants was adapted from the novel Ruggles of Red Gap by Harry Leon Wilson and is a perfect vehicle for the talents of our versatile comedian, Bob Hope, and glamorous comedian, Lucille Ball. You know, I think the glamorous comedian is here to stay. No longer do our feminine comics wear frumpy clothes and funny makeups. They're chic, well-groomed, and just like our Lux girls, they guard their beauty with Lux toilet soap which they know assures them the very best in complexion care. Now, Fancy Pants, starring Bob Hope as Humphrey and Lucille Ball as Aggie. It's England, 1905. And out in the countryside, a third-rate group of actors has just concluded another dismal performance. We're backstage now, and the cast is on its usual topic of discussion. That brilliant actor, Humphrey the butler. I don't know where he came from. I, oh, I can't stand anymore. Either that blundery monster Humphrey leaves the show or I leave it. Oh, my dear woman, now don't blame me. I'm only the stage manager. Oh, what's the use? We're not even making expenses. I suggest we all leave the cast and go home. Oh, Humphrey will never go home. I know he won't. It's an American plot, I tell you, to ruin the entire British theatre. A little applause, please. I'm about to make my entrance. Halfway, idiot! Thank you, thank you. That'll do, please. That's enough remarks. There's no more room between my shoulder blades. You know, with a little concentration, I may become another Gromico. Blundering American idiot. Fiend. Dracula! I'm going to catch a battle of the water all to make a little blend. Now, if you'll all keep quiet for just a moment, I've got some news for you. Yes, yes. What is it? What is it? It so happens that the young Earl of Brinstead was in the audience oh, tonight. Oh, royal? Yes, and not only that, but the Earl of Brinstead has a proposition to offer you. Oh, but well, yes, now, he's waiting in the office. Come along, all of you. Here we are, the entire splendid cast, I presume. Now, let me warn you, Earl, we're the finest actors in the British Empire, and we're going to be real tough to deal with. Now, what's your proposition? Well, um... uh, We'll take it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I recently have become acquainted with a rather intriguing young lady from America. Now, her mother is a nouveau riche, determined at all costs to inflict culture upon her daughter, Agatha. So I have invited Miss Floud and her mother to my country estate for the weekend to meet my family. Rather rash, eh, what? Since I have neither estate nor family. However, my friend Lord Twombley has lent me his home, and you, dear people of the theatre, shall enact the role of my family. On one condition, my lord, Humphrey stays here. Quiet, Ava. My lord, <laughs> my lord, there are members of this cast who are jealous of my sterling portrayals. I have played valets and gentlemen's gentlemen from Chicago to Liverpool, and the critics all say the same thing about my performance. Nothing she said, only buzzing about it, and I'll say, well, the front of war. <laughs> Yeah, but how can they print that in the newspapers? Well, I suppose it is good for you. She's putting all that blast for things. Yes, yes. What does he say? Oh, he said there'd be plenty to eat and drink, a good fee, and she's spoiling it all. He talks like that ever since he got hold of a loaded crumpet. Well, those are my terms. Oh, give Humphrey another chance. After all, he is human. Well, practically. Oh, very well then. But keep him away from me. Don't wear your hair up, honey. It's the grouse shooting season. <laughs> It's all settled, then. Yes, and we're off to the country, and I hope you have an elevator so the upstairs maid can have a fair share of me. 
I'll, uh, I'll send carriages for you the first thing in the morning. It'll be a lark for all of you. And for me, who knows? A rich wife, Miss Agatha Floud. <laughs> Oh, good afternoon, Mum. Maggie. Well? You got a curtsy. How many times did I tell you? Oh, Mom. Good afternoon. Your rap, Mum? I'll say. Bought it in St. Louis. Solid ermine. <laughs> oh, I'm the butler. Oh. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. I think so myself. <laughs> His lordship awaits in the garden. If the two mums will just follow me. Maggie, what class? Wish we had something like that back home. Oh, Ma, somebody'd shoot him before we got him near the house. <laughs> My Lord, direct from America, presenting Mrs. Floud and Miss Floud. Oh, so good to see you. Thank you, sir. Now, here are your guests. <laughs> Hi, Earl. Oh, Miss Agatha, Mrs. Floud, my family. This is my mother, Lady Brinstead. Flattered to meet you, Lady Brinstead. Charmed. Do it, Aggie. Charm. My cousin Rosalind, Duchess of Dover. Charm. How do you do? Aggie. Okay, Ma, okay. Howdy, Duchess. <laughs> Howdy, <laughs> His Lordship the 13th Duke of Brinstead, my father. Oh, imagine I looked in my boss's seat. Don't let me Hey, what's he trying to do to me? <laughs> Just kissing your hand, Miss Agatha. You'd think there was gravy on it. <laughs> you must forgive father's enthusiasm. Told him all about you, sir. You hear that, Aggie? The Earl told his pa all about you. And somebody ought to tell his mother all about his father. <laughs> well, I hope our guests find it relaxing here at Prince Ted Manor. Eh, Mama? Yes, indeed I do. Oh, beg pardon, my lord. Uh, yes, Humphrey? Your monocle is smudged. You've been breathing through your eyeballs again. <laughs> there you are. Anything else, my lord? Mustache wax, a touch of hair oil, perhaps? A whiff of stop it? <laughs> But uh, that'll be all for now. Thank you. <laughs> Holy smoke. Why, that's more service than the hired man gives us in a month back in Big Squaw. Yeah, come on, let's get out of here. Shut up. You know, Earl, this is the first time I ever saw a real English butler. I saw one once in a play. You, uh, you did? Yeah, I was in Cheyenne. Cheyenne, that was September 192. And we threw tomatoes at him. <laughs> Pelted him with ripe tomatoes. When I walked off the stage, the manager thought I was Red Skelton. <laughs> Jolly good sport, I wager. <laughs> eh, hey, Humphrey? Ham. And now, should I brew tea, my lady? Which kind should it be? What's the difference? Well, I can give you orange pico with a dash of lemon or lemon pico with a dash of orange. <laughs> then there's weak tea, or if you prefer extremely strong tea, keeps trying to batter its way out of the bag. I rather find the easy tea, rip on the coffee and ink them away. The Chinese put it in spring for this regulation. What did he say? Oh, he just said the rather fancy easy tea, rip on the coffee and ink them away. While Chinese imitation has little to just learn. Mum. <laughs> That's telling her, Humphrey. Thank you. Your tea, Mum. May I slash it about for you, Mum? <laughs> Please do. Tea time, tea time, jolly cup of tea time. Uh, a tea for you, mum, of course. Careful, Humphrey. Watch that tray, my good man. Oh, but, my lady, you know I'm all... Whoops! <laughs> oh! Oh! Soaked to the skin, all over me. Yes, yeah, quite a natural combination, mum, tea and lemon. Oh, oh you stupid, blundering oaf. I told you his performance was... Meter, would... meter, please. Well, just look at me. And what's this? Oh, it's just a slice of pumpernickel, Mum. <laughs> Dry out like new. It just needs pumping out, that's all. <laughs> Monster, you bore. How did you ever get to be such an idiot? Oh, just early to bed, early to rise. That's the answer, Mum. <laughs> well, don't stand there. I'm drenched. Do something. Yes, Mum. I'll fetch you some fresh tea, Mum. <laughs> Humphrey. 
Over here, Humphrey. I want to chew the fat. So soon after tea, Mom? Shh. What do they pay you around here, Humphrey? Six quid, three bob, tuppence, halfpenny, a fortnight, Mom. How much is that? I don't know. I'm still trying to find out what a fortnight is. <laughs> well, how about a nice fat raise, Humphrey? Are you trying to lure me from the service of his lordship, Mum? Exactly. Impossible. My family's always battled the Brinsteads. My father, my father's father, my father's 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 father. I could even go farther. <laughs> oh, now listen, son. Hanging around here ain't getting you nothing. Here, here's my card. Drop in at my hotel and we'll work out a deal. Double your salary. Don't tempt me, Mum. Money brings out the cad in me, and my cad is ready to get out. <laughs> well, meanwhile, just see that you keep out of the billiard room. The billiard room? Oh, I've been barred from the billiard room for life, Mum, for cheating. I won 50 pounds shooting pool with the Earl before he found out the terrible thing I'd done. The terrible thing you'd done? What was it? Oh, I can't tell you, Mum. What was it? Well, I soaked his pool cue in Jurgen's lotion. <laughs> He'd never have found out, but someone started to play Song of India and it crawled into a basket. Well, Aggie's in there with his lord. And he's alone. Who knows, Humphrey? Maybe he's going to propose. Gad, Mum. I trust the luscious Miss Floud knows what she's doing, Mum. Maybe she don't, but I do. Just imagine. An earl for a son-in-law. Hey, what are you doing, Humphrey? No, leave him be. I, I tell you, he's going to propose. Now then, Agatha, my dear, if, if, if you'll just give me your hand. Okay, here. <laughs> Thank you. You place the hand on the billiard cue. Vastly. Do you follow me? <laughs> may I tell you something, dear Agatha? May I, may I tell you that I brought you in here just, just to be alone with you? Why? Because you're the most exciting girl I've ever met. If, if, if only I knew the right words, if only I knew what to do. May I be of service, my lord? <laughs> Sherry, my lady? Well, don't mind if I do. Sherry, my lord? No, nothing for me. Thank you, Humphrey. Scotch and soda, my lord? Nothing at all, thank you. You may run along now. Scotch and water, my lord? No, nothing, thank you. Soda and water, my lord? Nothing. Water over water? <laughs> Scotch over ice, my lord. No, nothing, Humphrey. Scotch over scotch, scotch over bourbon. That would be all, Humphrey. Thank you. Care to play musical glasses? <laughs> it's jolly well crazy, my lord. No, nothing. Shall I draw the blinds, my lord? Draw your bath? Draw your picture. Look, Humphrey, draw what... Draw whatever you like, but somewhere else. Somewhere else. Yes, my lord. Or shall I chalk to mum's cue, my lord? Why don't we just give up until he winds down? <laughs> you heard his earlship. Hit the breeze and stop talking. Well, if Mum feels that way about it, Mum's the word, Mum. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, Agatha. Now, as I was saying, oh, my darling, if, if you only... Announcing Sir Wembley, Mrs. Floud, Lady Margaret, Lady Rosalind, and Sarah, my lord. Oh, for heaven's sake. Lady Margaret, Mum, may I serve the punch bowl? You may serve the punch bowl, Humphrey. Fine, Mum, as soon as I return from the laundromat in the corner. I can't think of any place else to put the goldfish. By the time you finish the punch, they'll be suds washed and rinsed three times. Well, Aggie, any news? Oh, lay off of me, will you, Ma? Well, you may not want his earlship, but I sure got a hankering for Humphrey. Ma! I tell you, Aggie, that Humphrey would make a real gentleman out of your paw. Take that home with us to Big Squaw? Well, why not? You got bats in your belfry. I don't care. I'm going to get that Humphrey for your paw somehow. If Lady Margaret had only fire him. Oh, Pa, just feed him to the pigs. Get over there and shoot your pool. I gotta think. How am I gonna do it? How? A little refreshment, Mum? Bavarian punch? Bavarian punch? A whiskey stirred with a Bavarian. <laughs> no, I don't want any. <laughs> well, Spike, Mum. A, a little punch, Mum? Why, thank you, Humphrey. Make you fit as a tiddly and ready to wink. <laughs> I'm if here. If you spill so much as a single drop on me, I'll... Oh, oh, oh but, Mom, I was bumped just as I was bending over to serve you, Mom. Someone oh. cued me. Oh, get out! Get out! Oh, look at me. Look at me. You're fired, fired, do you hear? And don't ever come back. Not tonight, tomorrow, or ever. Just get out. Stop beating around the bush. Oh, no. Get out! I know, get out. I know, I know. Humphrey, double the salary, remember? For shame, Mum, stabbing me in the back. You know how ticklish I am through there. 
Who stabbed you? I just gave you a little push with the billiard cue. Well, you working for us now? Oh, Big Squall. You said it. We leave next week. Big Squall. I'll pack me bags, Mom. Well, don't say it that way. What's the matter with Big Squall? Oh, nothing, Mom. It's just that I hate the idea of living in a town that's named after Crosby. <laughs> I got him, Aggie. I got him. Humphrey's coming home with us. Ah, oh, Ma. In a few moments, we'll present Act Two of Fancy Pants. Now, here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter, with the Lux Movie News of the Week. We're off to Mexico this week, John, to a gay, romantic Mexico setting for the Howard Hughes presentation, His Kind of Woman. That's the RKO picture starring Robert Mitchum as a gambler who goes straight and is forced to shoot it out with a tough gangster. And Jane Russell turns in some high comedy as an ex-band vocalist masquerading in high society. But she turns straight, too, and ends up in Mitchum's arms as his kind of woman. I hear Jane Russell wears absolutely dazzling costumes. But then Jane's a dazzler herself. She's a luxe girl, John. With a truly luxe lovely complexion. Yes, indeed. Jane Russell always depends on luxe soap care for her complexion. And she tells me she adores the big new bath size luxe. It makes her daily beauty bath so luxurious. So many screen stars say that, Libby. In fact... Bath size Lux is a favorite all over Hollywood and everywhere. The creamy lather is so abundant, even in hardest water. And I love the way it leaves my skin so fresh. Lux lovely all over. Yes, Lux soap's active lather makes you sure of daintiness, sure of charm. It has a delicate flower like fragrance that really clings, really lasts. Tomorrow, get this satin smooth bath cake that leaves skin Lux lovely all over. Nine out of ten screen stars. Use fragrant white Lux toilet soap. Now our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of Fancy Pants, starring Bob Hope as Humphrey and Lucille Ball as Aggie. Well, it's three weeks later, and our hero, Humphrey, his acting career blighted, has arrived at the Floud Mansion in Big Squaw, territory of New Mexico. Mrs. Floud is showing Humphrey around the house, while Aggie and her father... Oh, I sure missed you, daughter. I sure did. Say, how come you're all sunnied up on Tuesday? Oh, it's Ma, Pa. She's taken to finery like a hog takes to slop. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I wish I never found all them gold mines, Aggie, and got so doggone rich. And now that we got a butt. Oh, Aggie, I'm in a peck of trouble. And it's all his'n's fault. Humphrey's... Well, he is kind of lame brain. First, your ma wrote me that some Earl was making goo-goo eyes at you. Then she sends me a telegram that she's bringing home a gentleman's gentleman. So, naturally, I figured it's the same fella. Huh? Say that again, Pa. Aggie, I've told everybody in Big Squaw that you and Ma was bringing home a Earl. You told everybody? Oh, ha, 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 ha. Hey, what am I laughing at? And now the whole town's fixing to welcome him proper. Gosh, when Ma finds out, what'll I do? You won't have to do, Pa. You're gonna be did. <laughs> hey, no wonder Cart Belknap was so mad. Cart Belknap? Yeah, I saw him down at the depot. Couldn't figure out what was eating him. Piece by piece. Toughest hombre and big squaw, and Cart's mighty sweet on you, Aggie. There goes your problem, Pa. Cart thinks there's something between me and Humphrey, huh? Well, suppose I let him keep on thinking it. <laughs> Card had cut out his liver and bile his gizzard in his own sauce, and after that he... Jiggers, Pa, here they come. Ma and him. Well, there he is, Humphrey. That there's Mr. Floud. Howdy. Howdy, sir. Now, let's get one thing straight, Humphrey. I take care of myself, see? Oh, that's quite obvious, sir. <laughs> in the house, I always go around in my shirt sleeves. Anything wrong with that? Oh, no, sir, nothing at all, sir. But wouldn't it be better if you wore a shirt with him? <laughs> Just a suggestion, of course. Don't let me rush you into anything. Humphrey, I want you to meet our hired help. Get in here, boys. This here's Wampum, our Indian foreman, and this is Wong, our Chinese cook. Boys, meet Humphrey. How de do? Oh, de do. <laughs> all right, Humphrey. You can start right now lecturing Mr. Floud. Huh? Humphrey, your first doorbell. Go on, see who it is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, greetings. Oh, how do you do, Excellency? All right, folks, all together. Oh, 
together now. Welcome to Big Squaw, Your Grace. Your Grace? But who, me? <laughs> Howdy, Mayor. So good to see you all, my dears. Come on in. Oh, Effie, you're so lucky. Congratulations, oh, Mrs. Flash. Humphrey, uh, ain't he elegant? She calls him Humphrey, his first name right to his face. Oh, a real genuine earl. Oh, this certainly makes you the queen of Big Squaw's society, Effie. Me, queen? <laughs> Silly, isn't it? Oh, uh, your lordship, your tie, let me fix it. I'll double your salary, double everything. Only don't let them know you're just the butler. Oh, well, in that case is Humphrey, Earl of Brinstead, and on behalf of my hostess, allow me to welcome you all to Floud Manor. <laughs> oh, your lordship, it's two minutes past your tea time. How can you endure it? Sheer grit. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we tee off, then? <laughs> oh, ladies, please, if you line up in alphabetical order, you may breathe down my neck one at a time. Why are we so grippy, Effie? Oh, this is a fun group, isn't it? <laughs> this way, your lordship. Hey, Watson, bring off the tea. Oh. And don't forget the crumpets. What is crumpet? That's a bagel with a thyroid condition. <laughs> now, tell me, Earl... Do the American women compare with your English women? Oh, I think you American women are much prettier. How about your horses? Oh, I think your American women are even prettier than our horses. Oh. <laughs> Effie, Effie, where are you? Sorry, Ma. Haven't I asked you never to enter a room without dropping a curtsy to Humphrey the Earl? Yeah, Ma, I know. Dear, dear Earl, what would Lady Maud say? No carnation in your buttonhole. Oh, I can't wear them, you know. It turns my medals green. <laughs> uh, carnation, ladies. Here, you may shed it. Oh, Earl, please tell us about your medals. Here, yeah, some experience I could write up in the paper. Nothing doing, folks. His earlship's kind of pooped. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Now, let me see. Which medal shall I explain first? Oh, yeah, I think it was my first year of service in Africa. I was a mere lieutenant at the time. Well, those native chaps were becoming very nasty, meant to wipe us out, you know. They were only waiting for the end of the monsoon. Monsoon, that's French for mister. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Colonel Jothergill drew me aside. It's three against a thousand, he muttered. We had to have reinforcements. No man could get through. The Earl was just a boy at the time. <laughs> no, I was 13, as I remember. Oh. <laughs> well, Colonel Jothergill... <laughs> Old spit and polish, we called him lovingly because he was always spitting and he was Polish. Well, sir. <laughs> there we were, three against a thousand. Oh, how horrible. Stimulating, though. Then Colonel Jothergill told us the worst of it. Stiff upper lip, he muttered, starching his mustache. You'll have to face it, chaps. There was no more tea. They'd cut off our Liptons. <laughs> Oh, they'd pay dearly for this. We'd sell our lives at a fearful price, but how to stop them? How to get out of it? How? Oh, how? But... <laughs> there was no more time. They were storming the fort now. Three against a thousand, mind you. Oh, you're wonderful. Yes, there I was with a spear through my supple young body. <coughs> Didn't it hurt? Only when I laughed. Well, <laughs> I drew my cutlass, started... <laughs> I drew it. I started to hew my way through them. Oh, well, if you dear peasants will excuse me, I hope... If you would excuse me, well, I, um, I always take a nap before Tiffin. But, Your Lordship, what happened? How did it end? Oh, the encounter. Well, we finally put them to rout. But we all agreed that they were three of the toughest rascals we'd ever fought. Cheerio! <laughs> Gad, what a performance. <laughs> for the yellow dog saloon. Them two varmints, Aggie and Paws, over there in the saloon. It's a revolt. Ah, oh, but Effie, one does not disturb an earl this early, and the earl is feeling very earlish this morning. Humphrey, in the weekly newspaper, you may be an earl, and in front of my friends, you may be an earl. But every payday, you're Humphrey the butler, and your job is Paw and Aggie. Oh, but Mrs. Floud, I simply... Humphrey! Can't... Yes, Mum, I'm on my way, Mum. Yellow dog saloon, Mum. Say, uh, can anybody get in, Mum, or just yellow dogs? Oh, cut that out. <laughs> i just get down there and bring them back. Well, come on, Aggie. Tell her the 
rest of your big idea. Yeah, go ahead and tell them, Aggie. Honey. Well, boys, Pa and me come down here because we knew as soon as Ma found out we was gone, she'd send Fancy Pants, that is the Earl, down here to get us. Only meantime. Yeah, only meantime, I sent word for Cart Belknap to come over. So hang around, boys. Figure we might see something real interesting. <laughs> Aggie, Aggie, look. Look who's walking in. Fancy Pants. Come on in, Humphrey. Boys, I want you to meet our new boarder, the Earl of Brinstead. Earl, the boys of the Yellow Dog Saloon. Oh, how are you? Uh, no, no, don't get up. You'll muss up the sawdust. <laughs> uh, begging your pardon, young mum, but the maid has requested that you both return at once to the manor. What's wrong with our manners here? <laughs> oh, come on, Humphrey, sit down. Hey, Aggie, how about singing that song again for his earlship? Sure, Pa, why not? Hey, Sam, get over at the piano. Okay, Aggie. It's for you, Humphrey. Jolly decent of you, Mum. Give it to him, daughter! Hey, fancy pants. You're a pussy foot and critter. When you see a gal, you skitter. Hey, you! Fancy pants. Oh, you dropped your purdy hanky. Mama's gonna spank you. Hey! Fauntleroy! Women who crave men want to love cavemen. Say, angel boy, show some grit. That's what you gotta get. Hey! Fancy pants! You're a highfalutin' geezer, afraid to take a gal and squeeze her. Hey, you! Fancy pants! Run to mama for protection. How's your stamp collection? Hey! Tenderfoot! Looking at us and stomping and cussing. What you scared about? Take a chance. If you're rootin' and tootin', folks are quit a hootin'. There goes fancy pants. Hmm, fancy pants. Oh, I was just kidding, Humphrey. Now, why don't you tell the boys about the time you were in India? Oh, yes. By Jove, what a moment that was. In all India, I'd never come across a more ferocious beast. There it stood in the pitch black night, its immense size completely dwarfing the elephant I was riding. Oh, yeah? How could you tell how big it was in the dark? Cart. Oh, Humphrey, I, I want you to meet my boyfriend, Cart Belknap. Shake hands with his earlship. What are they, stranger? Oh, well, any friend of Miss Agatha's is a friend of... Oh. What's the matter, stranger? Get up off the floor. Oh, that's fine. Western hospitality. You do that again and I'll report you to Spade Cooley. <laughs> well, jolly meeting you, sir, but I fear it's crumpet time. I must be jogging along. Stay where you are. Yeah, you were looking at the great big animal in the dark. I was? Oh, I was. Yes, yes, yes. Well, its white coat stood out, the largest polar bear I've ever seen. Must have been at least... Polar bears don't belong in India. Yeah, that's what I kept telling him. Well, he kept coming toward me. I kept retreating step by step. What happened to the big elephants you were riding? Well, he'd gone to Washington to get ready for 52. <laughs> <laughs> dreamed of that. <laughs> well, there I was, alone, unarmed, except for a spear that a friendly native had left lodged in my chest. Yeah, but it only hurt when you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I withdrew the spear, staggered back, weak from the loss of blood, and I, I, well, it's crumpet time, I better be jogging. You know what I would have done to that big old bear? I'd have twisted his neck. Like this! Oh, oh. And I'd have got him by the ears, and I'd have yanked him off. Like this! <laughs> I wish you'd have been there. It would have been very... And I'd have got me a couple of handfuls of fur, like this. And I'd have pulled him off! Pa, maybe we better stop Carl. Oh, he's just getting warmed up, daughter. And you know what I would have done next? Don't tell me. Let me guess. All right, go ahead and guess. Well, I guess you'd have taken your trusty revolver... Well... ...and hit him over the head like this. Ooh! Chilly old chaps, I must whiz! Maggie, did you see what he did? Yeah, to Cart Belknap. Hey, fancy pants, wait for me. Now, just a minute, Mr. Mayor. Catch your wind and say that over it's again. It's true, Effie, it's true. President Teddy Roosevelt, he's making a tour through the Western Territory, so I sent him a telegram about the Earl, and he wired right back that he'd... 
He'd be delighted to come here. Land of Goshen, President Rose. Of course, he can stay right here in the house with you, can't he, Effie? Here in my house? Oh, man. Well, I gotta start organizing my committee. Goodbye, Effie. Mike Aggie, where are you? Ah, what is it? President Teddy Roosthout's coming here to see Humphrey. Huh? I'd have swore she said the president was coming here to see Humphrey. That's what I did say. <laughs> Effie, girl, you been hitting the Applejack? <laughs> Well, what's he want to see Humphrey for? Because he thinks Humphrey's an earl. Where is he? Where's Humphrey? Who, Humphrey? I said, where is he? You better tell her, Aggie. Well, the last time I saw him, Ma, he was sort of heading out of town. Out of town? But he'll get lost in the desert. Well, all of a sudden, he got kind of lonesome for London. Oh, you too. I might have known you'd do something like that. Now, Ma, we can't you help him. You go on after him, and don't you come back here without him. Now, get. Get. I'm lost. Lost in this endless desert. Water. Water. Anything that'll save my life. Water. A package of Chesterfields. <laughs> I'm going mad, I tell you, mad. The sand, the heat. I'm too young to die. Too young, too handsome. <laughs> water, water. It's a mirage, I tell you, a mirage. We do our washing in that mirage every Monday morning. Oh, yeah? And who asked you to come chasing after me? I want to get out of this country. Well, I don't exactly blame you, Humphrey. Me and Pa were awful ugly, and Cart Belknap... Cart Belknap. Only a coward would hit a coward. Oh, he just snapped his twig, that's all. You see, Cart wants to marry me, and I guess he got the silly idea that you and me were sweet on each other. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Preposterous. You're not even my type, Mom. You know, it took a lot of nerve belting Cart Belknap over the head. That's why I figured you might have nerve enough to meet President Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, well, I've got just as much nerve as... Who? Well, everybody thinks you're a real Earl, so Teddy Roosevelt's coming to Big Squaw just to meet you. Ha-ha! <laughs> well, you're gonna look pretty silly. And your Ma and Pa are gonna be looking silly. And this whole silly little town's gonna look silly. You'll have to change the name to Big Silly. <laughs> well, at that, it might be worse if you stayed. Imagine you trying to fool a president. Say, presidents can be fooled. They vote for themselves, don't they? <laughs> Besides, I made you think I was a butler. Well, that's easy. You are. Look, I've been waiting a long time to take some bows for my performance. I'm no Earl. I'm no butler. I'm not even Humphrey. Huh? My name is Arthur Tyler, and I'm an actor. Afra, Agva, and Sag. <laughs> And paid up. Actor. Gosh. Well, why did you pretend to be a butler? Because I was stranded in England. Flat broke. Gee, a real actor. Playing an English Earl for President Roosevelt. With me and Ma and Pa to applaud. Yeah, and I'd be the star. That's a step up. And an audience of three. That's a step up. <laughs> sure. Besides, there's a lot of innocent people down in town dependent on you, Humphrey. I mean, Arthur. Innocent? How about Cart Belknap? Would you tell him we don't mean anything to each other so he'd stop trying to put my head in his trophy room? Well, sure. I'll, I'll tell him that we don't mean a thing to each other. Well, there's my horse, Humphrey. Let's get back to town. Ah, yes, the horse. I hope you don't mind riding double. Double, Mum? Wouldn't think of it. Oof, there we go. Oof. <laughs> you all set, Mum? Perfectly comfortable, Mum? Oh, sure. Let's go. Later on, if your feet start hurting, maybe you can ride the horse. Thanks a lot, Humphrey. Not at all, not at all. Gee, President Roosevelt, a command performance. We accept the role, Mum, but for a one-night stand only. Then I must go on tour. What a handball. Wait till my agent hears about this. Yes, Mr. President. As Humphrey, Earl of Brinstead, I can assure you, sir... Oh, but of course, Mr. President, of course. Hey, 
in just a few moments, we'll return with Act Three of Fancy Pants. And now for my guest tonight, I have a young lady who's a charter member of Paramount's Golden Circle, Miss Joan Taylor. The circle means, Joan, that Paramount has high hopes you'll become a star. Well, I'm hoping, Mr. Keeley, and working like mad. But you already get your name in lights. You know, every time a picture you're in plays in Lake Forest, Illinois. <laughs> Confidentially, that's because my father owns the theater. <laughs> and, and your mother danced in vaudeville. Yes, she was a headliner and started me on dancing lessons early. Well, Joan, dancing started many a screen beauty on her career. Look at Jane Wyman and Alexis Smith. We're playing opposite Bing Crosby and Francho Tone in Paramount Pictures' wonderful new comedy, Here Comes the Groom. I watched it being made, Mr. Keeley. What fun. What tangled romances. Being in love with Jane, Jane engaged to Francho. And Alexis, the glamour girl whose competition brings Jane back to Bing. Yes, if you'd like to laugh, don't miss Here Comes the Groom. And when you see lovely Jane Wyman and Alexis Smith... Notice the smooth beauty of their complexions. Both Jane and Alexis know how easy it is to be Lux lovely, Mr. Kennedy, and I agree with them. Lux soap facials really work wonders for my skin. You have a lovely complexion, Joan, and as you know, here's all there is to a Lux Active Lather Facial. Cream the rich lather well into your skin, rinse thoroughly with warm water, then cold, and gently pat dry with a towel. It's the active lather that does the trick. Leaves skin softer and smoother. So discover how easy it is to be Lux Lovely. Get a supply of Hollywood's own beauty soap tomorrow. Nine out of ten screen stars use fragrant white Lux toilet soap. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. Curtain rises on Act Three of Fancy Pants, starring Bob Hope as Humphrey and Lucille Ball as Aggie. The biggest day in the history of Big Squaw is at hand. In a couple of hours, President Teddy Roosevelt is arriving to pay his respects to the Earl of Brinstead. And now, at the Flout Kitchen, excited preparations are underway. Yes, it's home cooking for the President. Oh, woe is me, what goes with me? I hate this living I've chose for me. Tired of eating misery. Should have never roamed and left that home cooking. Home cooking. Life is cruel, I was a fool to roam. I went abroad, and how I hawed them English critters they never thawed. When the Duke says, yes, my lord, partner, you can hear me elbow. Home cooking. Home cooking. No fancy pants will stand a chance with me. With a porch light screen door banner from Niagara Falls. Green grass lawn more home sweet home up on the wall. That's home cooking, home cooking. A quiet life is quite the life for me. Yes, give me that home cooking, home cooking. That's the life for me. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> just the way it's embroidered on my shorts. <laughs> I've been practicing a royal sneer all morning. I'll soon be getting fan mail from Basil Rathbone. Oh, what a season this is. Oh, it's probably just Carrie with her potato salad. Lay off the doorbell, honey. I'm coming. <laughs> Come in, Carrie. We'll... Oh. Mrs. Cloud, how do you do? Oh. <laughs> Fainted. Pick her up, Bennett, and bring her in. Yes, sir. That's the trouble with these surprise visits, Mr. President. Oh, here, here now. What's the miss, you chaps? She fainted. Oh, well, you see, President Roosevelt's coming, and everyone is simply... <laughs> <laughs> well? Aggie, Bob, Bob, Aggie, 
it's the president. Huh? <laughs> well, so it is. I'm Mike Floud, Mr. President. This here's my daughter, Aggie. How do you do? And this here's the Earl of Princeton. Oh, pleased to meet you. Any president of pause is a president of mine. How'd you, <laughs> how'd you do? Delighted. And this gentleman is Mr. Bennett, Secret Service, you know. Oh, yes, of course. And down here is our hostess, Mrs. Effie Floud. <laughs> Ma, wake up, Ma. Uh, I'm sorry I dropped in so unexpectedly, Mrs. Floud, but I've listened to so many speeches of welcome, I was hoping to avoid the one at your depot. Aggie, you take the president in the parlor till we get things fixed up in the kitchen. Uh, personally, I'd like to go in the kitchen with you. You mean it? I make a steak sauce that is very popular in Washington. You do? Extraordinary. Back to the kitchen, everybody. Delighted. Bully for you. And to think I almost voted for Brian. <laughs> I say this is a ginger group, isn't it? <laughs> My steak sauce. Now, who wants a taste? Gee, sure looks good, don't it? I still think it needs a little more cooking sherry. Paul. Well, perhaps another dash of sherry wouldn't hurt. Oh, have. nonsense, Your Honor. You keep your nose out of the president's recipe. Doggone it, Effie. There was plenty of sherry in your cooking before we got married. Why, Mike Flout, are you insinuating this? Gee, Ma, if you'd use stronger sherry, I bet I'd be two years older. <laughs> on his vacation. Do you want him to think he's back with Congress? <laughs> Bully for you, Brinstead. Now, tell me, what is the attitude of England regarding the Mediterranean situation? Oh, yes. Well, frankly, there are two schools of thought, pro and con. Well, of course. <laughs> but uh, just uh, how do you feel about it, pro and con? Well, the pro people seem to be for it, and the con group are definitely against it. <laughs> definitely, sir. Uh, but you, Brinstead, uh, just uh, what stand do you take? Oh, me? Well, uh, yeah, well, I'm pro. Pro? Mm -hmm. How can you endorse a situation like that? Oh, well, what I mean is I'm pro-con. I'm for those who are against it, you see. <laughs> no, I don't, but... Uh, Effie, mean uh, Effie, where are you? It's the mayor. The train came in, but he wasn't even on it. He didn't even... Jump in Jehoshaphat. President Roosevelt. He's here, folks. He's here. <laughs> Mr. President, as mayor of Big Squaw, permit me to welcome you to our fair city. And in honor of this... Oh, bravo. Excellent speech, Mr. Mayor. Brief but meaty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you all. But I've got a whole lot more to say. That's all right. You can mail it in later, Mayor. Well, thank everybody you. Everybody get a plate and pitch right into it's the It's free, middle. you know. Everything's free. I want you to try some of the venison, Mr. President. Aggie here shot at herself. Yeah. Well, if you, ma'am, if only I had time, I'd do some hunting. Oh, what we ought to have is a fox hunt. Oh, yes, they're fun, especially if the fox is riding a fast horse. <laughs> Over hill and dale, yikes and away, all that sort of tittle. Blasted shame you have to be pushing off, Mr. President. After all, I do have a schedule. Bad show. Disappointing to the hounds, you know. Why, Dad, we won't disappoint the Brinstead. Oh, Bennett. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, we're staying over. See oh, about the train. Well, yes, Mr. President. Right, President. And you, Brinstead, you shall lead the hunt. Me? Tomorrow morning. Oh, but I... We'll spend the whole day on horseback. <laughs> the whole day on horseback? I may find a new place to put my Dr. Scholl's foot pads. <laughs> I don't care what time of night it is, Humphrey. You and me are staying here in the corral until you learn to ride a horse. Now, this is tougher on me than it is on you. Yeah, but not in the same place. <laughs> Let's face it, Aggie, I can't even ride a jackass, even after all those road pictures we made together. <laughs> that goes with here comes the groom, doesn't it? I can stay on a horse. I can stay on a horse when he walks, I think, but I can't go out there riding in any fox hunt. Playing an Earl was easy, but all I ever hunted was a job. Well, I ain't asking you to ride just for Big Squaw or for Pa or Ma. It's for me, Humphrey. Me? I mean you? <laughs> the first time I saw you, I said to myself, here's a dirty, low-down, lily-livered coyote. <laughs> then, as I got to know you better, I figured you for a filthy, sneaking rat. <laughs> Yeah, I grow on people like that. <laughs> but then again...
again, you remind me of a little old chipmunk I had when I was a kid. Only thing I ever loved. Same look in the eye as you got. <laughs> I'll never forget how he looked at me just before he went west. California? Dead. Smog poisoning, huh? <laughs> Cart Belknap shot him. Hey, did you ever tell Cart Belknap that we didn't mean a thing to each other? Well, not yet, Humphrey, but I was fixing to. Well, don't. Huh? Well, I don't like my women to be lying. You mean you aren't running out on us? Nothing's going to stop me now. Maybe not even a horse. Oh, Humphrey, would you kiss me? Nobody will see. It's dark out here. <laughs> Gee, that was swell. Yeah. He's a very affectionate horse. Now it's my turn. <laughs> this fox on bully. Well, may not be exactly like England, Mr. President, but the fox will never know the difference. Oh, here <laughs> comes Brinstead. Tally ho, pip pip everyone, top of the morning, Your Excellency. Thank you, Brinstead. Splendid day for the... Brinstead, why, you're limping. Yeah, what you doing with that cane? Oh, this? Well, I couldn't find a crutch. I looked all over. <laughs> crutch? Good heavens, man. Oh, it just happened, you know, about to leap on my horse when my old leg injury hit me again, just like that. Old leg injury? Yes, I got it playing rugby at Oxford. I kicked a rug too hard. <laughs> Kept me off the crew, you know. I was a four-letter man. Yeah, and I can spell it. <laughs> well, we can't have the hunt without you. Guess we'll have to call it off. Oh, nothing of the sort. Tradition. Oh, no, I'll be all right. Old fellow, whop him, old boy. Oh. Just bring my beast over here and have her lie down. I shall get aboard somehow. <laughs> oh, oh, Brinstead, oh. you can't possibly ride. Oh, I'll suffer through, Prez. Nothing stops the Brinstead. Excelsior! Your family motto? No, somebody fetch some. I'll put it in my pants. <laughs> you can't ride. President's orders. Oh, well, I guess I'm outvoted then. Rum luck, eh? Better take my horse along, though. This could give her an inferiority complex. She wouldn't be able to hold up her tail among the other horses. <laughs> well, buzz off without me, you lucky people. Mount up, you all. Have fun. I'll just sit here till you and the pain go away. Well, folks, I guess we're all ready then. Yeah, you might as well start us off, your earlship. Get on your mark. I mean... <laughs> Trump the trumpets! <laughs> Unbox the fox! Hey, look at him go! Must have a date with another fox. <laughs> Unbound the hounds! <laughs> Yikes away! Tell you all about the horse! Wampum. Oh. I shall be in my room. Be a good fellow and buzz me when you hear them returning. Oh. Hey, all of a sudden you walk pretty good. Here's a buck, Buck. <laughs> How do I walk now? Keep back. Keep back. Remind me to autograph a feather for you. Come on in, your lordship. Belknap. I've been waiting for you. Cart Belknap. Sorry about your bum leg, your lordship. You do ride, don't you? Ride, my dear fellow? I was born in the saddle. Mama got a bad break with the traffic lights. <laughs> it's very funny. Now, let's see you laugh your way out of this one, Mr. Tyler. Tyler? Who's Tyler? You are. I've been looking around your room, and I found this. Put down that scrapbook. You're wrinkling the lace. Put it down. You heard me. Put down that scrapbook. Put it down, I say. Why should I put it down? So you can help me pick up my teeth. Shut up. Full of newspaper clippings, ain't it? Like this, for instance. Arthur Tyler, an American and an actor, but not a very good one. Well, I was a British critic, and they didn't like American actors then. That was before the loan. But look at here. <laughs> says Arthur Tyler gives a standout performance. Only that ain't all it says. He stands out as probably the worst performer who ever... Oh, you admit you're Tyler, huh? Oh, of course not. I'm Humphrey, Earl of Brinstead, pip pip Talion, all that sort of there, the... Then what's his scrapbook doing under your pillow? Well, I, I like to sleep with my head high. You know, the president and the whole town's going to be real upset when they find out how you and them flouds try to make fools out of them. Oh, but Mr. Belknap, surely you're not going to tell him about it. I mean, not so much for me, but for the flouds. They're such nice people. Especially Aggie? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I wouldn't miss this for a million bucks. Well, cheerio, Mr. Tyler. I'll put a real good finish in your scrapbook for you. Your funeral notice. You can't do it. You're not going out of this room with that scrapbook. Oh, no? No! So long, Humphrey. I'll unlock the door as soon as they get back from their fox hunt. Oh, Humphrey, this is 
terrible. Cart Belknap knows you're just an actor? Yeah, he found my scrapbook. Where is he? Where'd he go? Well, Cart just left. You know the president's got to catch that train. They're all down at the depot now, waiting for you. Yeah, then what are we doing here? No. No, I can't go down there. Belknap's got my scrapbook. He's going to tell everybody that I'm... Not if we get there first, he won't, and I know a shortcut. He'll beat me up again. He'll tear me to pieces. Who cares, as long as the president is gone by then? Yeah, who cares? What are you, a salesman for the Blue Cross plan? <laughs> oh, my leg. Oh, my old injury. My war wounds. Humphrey, this is Aggie. Yeah, that's right. Gee, you're pretty. Come on, Humphrey. We're going down to the depot. <laughs> How good of you to see me off But what happened to you? Well, I was determined to reach the train before you left, sir But I fell down twice for every time I got up Bad leg, you know, sir Starts at my hip and goes all the way to the floor You shouldn't have attempted it The condition you're in Now, you should see the condition I'll be in Oh, but don't worry about me Splendid hunt, I hear I wish I'd been there Perhaps we'll hunt together sometime when you come across the big pond. Delighted, Vincent. Bully of you. Bully. I have put on a little weight. <laughs> All right, Miss Bennett. You can start the train. Yes, sir. Start the train. No. No, wait, Mr. President. You and this whole town ought to know what the flowers and that fake girl's trying to put over on you. What are you talking about, Belknap? Why, he's just a cheap little actor. What's this? The most humiliating thing I have. Why, I shall return immediately to he's England. He's a fake. I sh In this book, I got to prove it. Give me that book. Come back here. Stop it, somebody. Stop it. So long, Aggie. So long, Paul. So long, Effie. <laughs> I'm lost. Lost in this endless desert. Water, water, I'm going mad, I tell you. Mad. Hey, fancy pants! Fancy pants, wait! Aggie, Aggie, no. No, they'll follow your tracks. You lead them to me. I want to die alone, alone and healthy in this frightful desert. Oh, relax, will you, Humphrey? The president's gone, and as for Cart Belknap, well, I told everybody the truth. When they like somebody in these parts, they don't care if he's a butler or a horse thief, or even if he's an actor. They want you to come back, Humphrey. So do I. Gee, Aggie, if you'll be Lady Brinstead, I mean, if you'll be Mrs. Humphrey Higgins, no, I mean if uh, Mrs. Arthur Tyler, you'll make me the three happiest men in the world. <laughs> oh, Humphrey, darling, of course I'll marry you. Oh, it'll be wonderful, Aggie. We'll settle down, and after the first year, we'll hear the patter of little feet. Yes, and after the second year, we'll hear the patter of more little feet. Yeah, and Aggie, about the third year... Yes? The third year, let's have a baby. I'm tired of feet. <laughs> In just a few moments, we want you to meet our stars in person, and Mr. Keeley will tell you all about next week's show, but now... Here's Libby Collins with a big piece of news for you. You mean, John, with a big question for everyone. A question? Yes. Who is the lovely Lux girl? Or perhaps I should put it this way. Can you identify the portrait of the Lux lovely Hollywood star whose eyes are masked out? Her picture's appearing in newspapers all over the country, on posters, in grocery stores, everywhere. Oh, she's the mystery star in the big Lux girl contest. And it is a big contest. $60,000 worth of prizes. Why, the first prize is $5,000 cash plus a Ford Victoria sedan. And there are hundreds of other prizes. Ten Ford Custom V8 two-door sedans. 214 karat gold diamond boulevard watches. $10,000 in additional cash prizes. Over 1,200 opportunities to win. And it's such fun to enter. Because first you look at the picture of the lovely Lux girl you'll see at your grocery store. And right on the poster is a clue to help you. She's the star of Metro Goldwyn Mayer's Too Young to Kiss. That makes it easy for everyone to identify her. Now comes more fun in your entry. You complete the last line of a jingle. And here's the jingle June is her name. The last is da da da. That's where you fill in the star's name. I'll repeat it. June is her name. The last is da da da. Her lovely skin's beyond comparison. Her beauty soap's the one for me. You write a last line to rhyme with me. There are lots of things you know to write about Lux Soap to help you write that last line of the jingle. For instance, Lux is Hollywood's own beauty soap. It has active lather that leaves skin softer, smoother. And Lux Soap's delicate perfume clings, leaves skin sweet and fresh. Nine out of ten screen stars are Lux girls. So go ahead, enter this big Who Is This Lovely Lux Girl contest right away. 
Get the entry blank at your grocer's tomorrow. It gives you all the rules, the jingle, and the address. Send in as many entries as you wish, but with each entry, attach two Lux toilet soap wrappers, either regular or bath size. Remember, there's $60,000 in prizes waiting for winning last lines. Yours may be worth $5,000 cash and a Ford Victoria sedan. Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. And here they are for a curtain call, Bob Hope and Lucille Ball. We want to thank you doubly for making us forget our troubles for an hour. Always nothing at all, Bill. Always glad to do a benefit. <laughs> Bob, this wasn't a benefit. This is the Lux Radio Theater. Well, it was a benefit for me. After all, how much Lux soap can I eat? <laughs> but, Bob, they pay me money, and then I buy my own Lux soap. It's cheaper that way. How do you like it? Crosby told me he saved the wrappers and sent Gary to college. <laughs> Why, Bob, you don't need any more money with all those successful pictures you make for Paramount. Yeah, what's the title of your new picture, Bob? The one you made with Hedy Lamarr? My Favorite Spy. Oh, that's the picture Bob's fans are writing him about. His fans? You mean his relatives. <laughs> Hold it, Lucy. Yes, they write in, but it's different from your Lux Girl contest, Bill. Anyone anywhere in the world has a chance to have the world premiere of The Favorite Spy right in their own living room. And guess who'll be their guest for dinner? I knew you'd try for a free meal somewhere along the line. <laughs> Seriously, Bob, that sounds like a wonderful idea. I'd like to enter myself. I'd rather enter the Lux Girl contest because I am a Lux Girl. It's my favorite complexion care. Well, if you want to enter this contest, you write me to Bob Hope Contest, Hollywood 38, and tell me why you think the world premiere should be held in your home. The person who gives the best reasons will find me and the picture parked in their living room with all the trimmings of a big Hollywood premiere and a few publicity men. That'll make uh, three of me, all told, because naturally, with my personality, I play a dual role in the picture. Can you imagine seeing a movie with two Bob Hopes in it? How about Lux Radio Theater next week, Bill? Well, it'll be another Paramount picture with a very famous title. One of the top dramatic successes of last season, Sunset Boulevard. And from the original cast, we have the two stars, glamorous Gloria Swanson and that talented actor, William Holden. Co-starring with them will be one of Paramount's Golden Circle players, Nancy Gates. A terrific combination and a terrific picture, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night. You are both great. Have you ever been embarrassed by a stocking run just when you wanted to look your best? Then take a tip from Hollywood screen stars. Wash your nylons the Lux way. You'll cut needless runs in half. The Lux way makes nylons last twice as long. Fit better, too. Strain tests prove it. No other soap, no suds of any kind, can make stockings last longer. Over 90% of the makers of stockings recommend Lux. New Lux with color freshener keeps stocking colors clearer, too. Get a big box tomorrow. Keep Lux in the bathroom for everything you wash by hand. Give all your washables that nice as new Lux look. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lex Radio Theater presents Gloria Swanson, William Holden, and Nancy Gates in Sunset Boulevard. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is the CBS Radio Network.